Hey, how you doing? In this episode of Making You a Bartending Pro, oh. we're going to talk about... Oh, it doesn't mean I got other stuff. Anyway, Barroom Blitz 6 here. Barroom Blitz 6 here, back again. Um, this time I'm going to talk about the type of fuel sources. We're not going to go into the, like, expect details. I'm actually, who knows? Anyway, there's methane and methanol. I'm trying to go off my head, but... Methane is mostly the writing collection of food waste, fruits, vegetables, wood, stuff like that. Methane can be made from anything that can rot, like wood, or grass, or fruits, or meat, or people, or certain um, construction equipment. Depends on now how how the quality of methane is depends on the item that is writing or the methane that's being collected. Um the the least one, like the second the very bottom one is products like construction products or cement or stuff like that, because it has to be mixed with other stuff to get the most, and then the one from the bottom of that is Fruits, certain fruits have the least ones, but certain other fruits have some of the highest methane. And then the one from that is vegetables. And then the next one from that is... Depends, it's hard to say, because the cane wood, wood, wood furnaces, wood stove, all produce methane heat, or wood carbon heat, it depends. And then there's meat that does the same thing as wood. It also produces meat. Dead stuff produces meat, methane, and there are certain, um, like I said, plants, fruits, and vegetables that does the same thing as those. Those are methane, the right. Methanol is similar to trying to make ethanol or fermented alcohol, but it's just what is used to make the same process of that, like, you use writing stuff, put it through a fermentation process. Methane is letting something rot itself and adding rot to it while it ferment without air, and then, or anaerobic, and methanol is making rot stuff and using an object to ferment it to make methanol, or it's like multiple version of methanol to make it. But it's hard to say. You can use certain flies can help make methanol and stuff like that. Or you don't have to use writing food to make methanol. You can use other stuff to make methanol. I'm just not too keen on it because I can do it, but it's hard to explain it. Um, how do I say this? Methanol and ethanol are the same. If you want to make fermented methanol, Without distilling it, you won't need a permit. It depends on the state and location of your area. But if you want to distill it, depending on your state, location, and federal other federal area. Um, and then both methane and methanol, you can purify methane with iron sulfide, iron or steel or coal. It depends on you want to do it. And methanol, it depends on which methanol you're going for and what you're using it as. And then. The next branch after that is alcohol. That's fermented alcohol and then there's ethanol alcohol. It's the same thing as methane, methanol. Some states like you do I still or some states not, but no matter what federal have is ramming up your butts. Anyway. Um alcohol, fermented alcohol. Fermented alcohol is more like beer or pure or a beer that's been cleaned but not distilled. And then Wine is made from something else, but it's made the same process as fermented alcohol, depending on what wine is, that's still. And then, ethanol is that still process. So, as fuel source, um, everything has its own version of how you make it, portion of the alcohol. The, there is, I'm going to do a more thorough video on this, and the alcohol section, there is, the wash, the trout, 
and the alcohol itself, and then sometimes the terms change, and then there's waste products, all that that can be used to make alcohol or fuel or medicine, and then there's Easter, which make off of alcohol, and then it depends on where if you want to make it. There's using starches, using carbohydrates, using meats, using fruits, using vegetables, using certain plants, mix it with potassium, ammonia, nitrogen, sulfur, carbon, blah, blah, blah. And then the type of process you use to filter that, and then the type of that starter you use, the type of burrow you age it with, the type of material you age it with, the type of material you cook it in, where you cook it, what yeast you're using, where you grow the yeast, where was the yeast grown, how is it grown, are you freezing it, are you leveling it, are you getting it hot, are you changing the temperature on it, the age of it, how long you've been sitting, where you sit it, the light, has it been hitting it, the sun that have not been hitting it, that. Since I don't drink alcohol, other than use it for my fuel, it just does what it does, and I have to report how much proof per gallon, 50% proof per gallon a year. So if I made one gallon, that's 50% proof, I have to put one gallon, 50% proof, but if I made five gallon, that's 50% proof plus, then I have to report five gallon times 50% of whatever, for block, whatever, yearly. I try to turn mine in at the end of December, but I'm going to try it, or I have latest to February next year to turn it in. But you know, that's that. And then there's freaking, was it propane, which is considered a form of alcohol or fuel. And it is made similar as methane, but propane uses more oil, oil based to do so. And then there's freaking diesel, unleaded, and regular, where Diesel fuel is more of a heavy oil base, super heavy, where they get it, where they age and how they grow it and how they process. While leaded and unleaded, it just it's like diesel, but it's leaded in it and or it's unleaded where it's a different process, just oil mixed with a combustible. Now most of those liquid most of oil, like most fuel we have today is combustibles, meaning if you need an explosion inside a small tank. Meaning you need something that's very flammable based on the sparks you have. And you need something that's very lubricated to lubricate it. You can use some of those pure, but that depends on how often you want to clean what material you're using or not. There's E85 car fuel, which is mean it's 85% fuel and 25% or 15% ethanol. And then it's whatever, then it's methane and blah blah blah, I go back and forth. This is basically alcohol and oil mix at a certain ratio. Based like that. That's the, that's the simplest way to describe it. Um basically it, unless you're using pure alcohol, which you need to turn the spark down to get the proper addiction, and you need to make an object for the pounds per square inch or the placement of fuel based on the explosion inside the object can push the object. Just if you're using combustible, not if you're using anything else. But um the next thing is that we can get a renewable the solar energy that uses power of light. We use photovoltaic cells, which is silicon. There are many things that get electronic excited due to sunlight, people, skin. But sin or photovoltaic cells silicon get the most. Which is the same thing using computer stuff that could be um used in it. You can make solar panels or wafers, it depends on how we are, the quality of it, how well you are, how you set what you set up, how you set up to get the energy from it and you need to convert it down. And then there's wind energy that you use wind to turn it in magnetic core, which is round of copper or aluminum, whatever that to, to build drive the energy to something like a store battery, and then there's freaking uh geothermal energy. With geothermal energy is more of a heat base for health and fuel, but they've been looking at processes like it's like steam, which is burning something to get steam, and a steam itself is a power source. But geothermal is just digging certain feet so far into the earth where it gets nigh close. Well, the earth itself is like around a constant 300. 400 Fahrenheit and the distance it go travel up to you by the time it gets to you the temperatures be like at I don't know 200 or 300 Fahrenheit and then you have to adjust the temperature down and then it redirects its path back into something that's hard to say and then there's wave energy that um 
have item, items that stuck in the ocean or in a lake and when the water come up and push the item the item builds up energy based on the ways that but it's more like a push energy thing where you rub the thing push harder get electrical energy but whatever but um then anything about using Tosai or Edison Edison is a wire based energy person right because Tosai is a free energy they don't know about that that's steam they don't know about that then there's um that's pretty much all the energy source that's all out there at the moment. Um, there's water as a fuel source, but the water is most likely has a electrolyte, which is HAO, which is a water with an electrolyte. Think of a battery, but without the battery itself. The water has an electrolyte in it, and there's conductive plates surrounded by insulation, and the spark. Is going to the plates where it's excited the electric electrolyte water, which is from another battery, and that electrolyte generate the energy in those plates will give the energy something else. And then there's there's another version. I forgot about that. There's a, both dry and wet ones. Now every last one of them had dangers to it. Every last one of them. Um the most safest one I've seen in a lot of solar or wind. In forms of, if you decide to make it yourself, you won't be in that much danger to it. The solar panels or solar wafers or whatever, most of the dangerous thing, if you're going to do a tight end grid, you're going to, depend on the state, you got to report it. You don't need to report it to the, it depends on the state you can go to. For my area, I don't need to report it to the city, but. I do need to talk to the electrical company about it so I can use my own energy then as a backup if my energy dropped to a certain voltage so I rated it uses theirs that's solar and the same thing will win but that's in house energy not fuel the main thing about solar panels you have to worry about is how much sunlight you get and how often you're gonna have to clean and the other safety thing is how hot those wafers get, cause they can get around like 150, like, I don't know, it's like negative 60 or 30 or 20 right now, and if, if I made wafers, like pure wafers, they can get around a good 80 outside even right now, and if it wasn't that cold outside, it would be higher than that, that's the other damage thing. The wiring is a dead obvious, wind, wind power or windmills or wind power, that's danger based on the item you use because if it's using to a winter like they do in Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, freaking Idaho, Iowa, Pennsylvania, New York and stuff, they have to or some section of the south in California, they have to um use specific coating on the material to sustain the weather environment. But other than danger than that, there's not that much danger. Just go up there and knock it down, blah blah blah. So the air is only that so high of a bill fee, but you don't need that big of a bill fee to run a single house or a apartment complex. Other than you maintaining fits, you want to fit and fly natural danger, but yeah. Other than why danger, yeah, or it falling over. And then going down from that's the least dangerous one to the next one is freaking was this damp power or water power? That um you know how dams work. The water come down, hit that, push a motor, and that generate the power. Same thing with water. That's basically it. You're not burning a dam on your house or unless you live right near a waterfall, you build dikes and stuff. And then the next one is HAO as water. It's hard to see on your danger scale where to see that because HAOs can be just as dangerous as ethanol, methane, propane, diesel, unleaded, unleaded, as well as freaking all that stuff due to because uh, you're making, you're not splitting atoms, but you're just doing a electrolysis process on the water where the hydrogen is pushed out because you have to have the hydrogen pushed out of the cell and the oxygen going. That's another, that's one of the main things people do about which is body to your research. You don't need to get a permit to do that. But not many, many people know about it. You don't need a permit to do that. But it's already recommended to do your research before you make it. And you know by methane, A, you're not supposed to drink it. Methanol, you're not supposed to drink it as alcohol fuel. 
they already told me that I can either use pure ethanol or I can mix something with that alcohol where it is undrinkable by anyone. I can do all of those. Um, then there's methane, methanol. Methane, you can you're not supposed to drink this. Ethanol at 100% proof plus does a certain amount of percentage before you get endangered or pass out. But methane and methanol have a lower percentage than that. That means a tiny bit can do that. And then methane is in tiny bit. You shouldn't be doing that anyway. And then there's propane, you know better. There's diesel, they an unleaded, regular, super leaded, super regular, super diesel, and whatever the heck they use. Bam. I'm not gonna talk about wave energy because the only dangerous things you need to do about that is take a big box item that has the ability to get generated by a wave, pull it into the ocean, and just walk away. Or there's there's free energy versus the wire cord cord is what the Sweetland do, and then a sweet Switzerland does that. Certain parts of Africa and South America that does that. But then all the wires are corded, leading to a power source, power by the wave, whatever. No. Those are dangerous because it's waves, but it's not that dangerous. If you know it as well. And then there's geothermal, which is only dangerous if you have an improper setup. Because how deep in the ground you go is how hot the temperature is going to be at base. The safety standard is you want to get deep in the ground to it is a constant 200 Fahrenheit or about 130 calcis. 100 calcis? Constant year round, no matter what. And then once it gets to a certain level in the ground, it should be around 100. Actually, it should be around 120 Fahrenheit. And when it gets to you, you can set the temperature where you want to be away, be 120 as it comes to your house or 110 or 100 as it comes to your house or apartment. That's geothermal. But like I said, the only dangerous thing about that is. Having the temperature set incorrectly inside your house or having people do know, don't know how to set the temperature correctly. Because even in houses with electrical, radio, gas, propane, water, heaters, or energy like that, the temperature still had to be set on safety standards. At the source itself, you want the temperature set at 180. And then when it gets you that way, you can turn into faucets and stuff from zero up to 100 or whoever, however you like to take a shower. But some states said 120 Fahrenheit or less is where you want the temperature set at. My stuff is set on 170, kind of like my shower's hot, but that's just me. Stuff like that. Anyway, that's the energy source. I'm out.